Bonsoir. Good. Hi. <laughs> All right. We have how many viewers? We have a lot of people online watching as well. Hi, world. <laughs> The Are last time I guess go? we had you on Virgin Radio, there was it was like a blow at international success. Everybody tuned in to hear your okay. interview. Yeah, right. so you so got we only a lot. have 200 now this time. Great. No, <laughs> no, no, it's counting and counting <laughs> and counting. Are we ready to go? We have bar. Yeah. Okay, bar. So this is pretty loose because we're not live on the radio or anything, okay. but we're taping it for the radio, so we could have fun. We could swear at them. Oh. It's all good, not that. <laughs> Fuck <That's> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you can say Everybody that. Everybody enjoy sure. that. So welcome to Montreal. Adam Lambert Yay! is at the Virgin Yay! Radio Studios. So we know you were at Music Plus yesterday because I had an opportunity to, to uh, meet you and ask you a question there last night. So what have you done since that interview? Because you're in a really cool city, one of the coolest cities in North America. What did you do last night? Slept. Aww. That's it? Yeah, man. Come I'm on. going. I'm going, going, going. I've been on the road for about two weeks promoting this album, which I'm very excited about. But every time that I have free, I need to, like, rest. So that's what I've been doing. Chilling. Okay. But this morning, I've been doing more of this. So. Right. Yeah. But we're picturing Adam Lambert resting. So what does that entail? You're in your hotel room. Do you order room service? I did. I ordered some fish and some salad okay. last night. And uh, I watched So You Think You Can Dance on TV. <laughs> And uh, just relax, kick my feet up, talk to some friends on the phone. Mm -hmm. Much of a dancer? Bed. Me dancing? Yeah. Uh, I, I like to dance, but I'm not a dancer. I wouldn't put it like as a trade. Okay. No. You're but better. I love watching dancers. I love dance. I love watching it. I think it's great. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, you're saying you're watching So You Think You Can Dance, and I was listening to your album, and I thought there's a really like big funk and dance totally. influence on yeah, Trespassing, yeah, right? Totally. So I'm wondering if you have no two left feet, but a lot of rhythm in you that... I mean, I can dance, mm -hmm. I, and who knows what the future holds. There might be some more choreography in my blood, but um, I definitely plan on like standing there and having people dance around me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good time. You won't have a problem with that with Natasha, the singing, by the way. They can do the dancing. You know, <laughs> it'll be perfect. Would you like to do your dance that you do every morning in the studio? And no, we'll save no. it to later. It's all about Adam right now. <laughs> it's all about he Adam. might join you, though. Unless there's a possible gig where I can be a backup dancer, that's fine. It's, you're in. You're in. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you. you. You're booked. <laughs> so we were saying yesterday at, at Music Plus, and it's funny how you answered the question, but I'll ask the question again. How down to earth you are for somebody that, you know, has taken off and... Yeah, you're very well, thank, famous. Well, thanks. A lot of people, like I said to you yesterday, say nice things about you. You don't really read any bad things about you. You're, you were like, oh no, there's people who. There's hate plenty me. of bad <laughs> things too, but no, but what? I try not to pay attention to that. You right. know? How do you stay? I'll ask the same question for the people who didn't see it on Music Plus. But how do you stay so grounded, especially in an industry where you know, with uh, people are saying whether it's good or bad, and your ego could inflate or deflate. How do you stay so grounded in an industry that has ruined so many people? Mm. Well, you know, I mean, there's such a potential for so much up and down, you know, in one minute you're being praised, next minute you're being torn apart. So I think really the important part is to kind of keep in mind the big picture. You know, it's like what I was saying to you yesterday. I have the same friends, like close friends that I've had before all this happened. I, you know, I have a great family. I, you know, try to put it all in perspective and say, look, I'm lucky. You know, look at this opportunity I have now and look at this, look at my life. Look what I get to do as a job. You know, I'm lucky. So... When I, whenever I start feeling a little bit like stressed out or overwhelmed, I remind myself of that, and it helps me a lot. Yeah, you yeah. know, your album hit number one in Canada and in the U.S. last week, right? And yeah. I, I'm just I'm wondering because your single hasn't really been dropped yet. It's just been dropped this week, I yeah, believe. Yeah, we're right? in the process of dropping. Okay, yes. it's in the process yes. of dropping. <laughs> so how is it that your album becomes number one in Canada and U.S. when nobody really has heard a lot of the music from it? Great so, fans. That's great what fans, it is. Right? Yeah. So you owe it to your fans around the world yeah. who are just following you. So it, it's kind of like a fan movement that's it is, following yeah. Adam Lambert. So yeah. what would you have to say to them who are all tuning into Virgin right now? Now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we did it. It's a we thing. It's us. Mm. We did it. You know, I, I think um, now the next step is 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 getting to share the album with your friends and, you know, maybe getting it on the radio and, and sharing it with, with the world. But yeah. I'm really glad that the fans responded so well to it. And, and it is because of them. Another way you can share it with the world is maybe going on tour. Yes. Any plans eventually, for that? Yeah. Eventually. I don't know exactly know when yet. Um, probably next year. Okay. Yeah, probably. Is there any uh, time for play this year, or is it all work? It's a lot of work. Um, you know, the good news is that the album is released around the world, so I'm going to spend the rest of the year promoting it internationally mm -hmm. and, and taking advantage of opportunities outside of the U.S. and within the U.S., Hopefully some more singles, some more music videos. Yeah. So how do you have time to promote your album when you're going to be going into rehearsals in London to <laughs> tour with Queen? It is a little bit of a juggling yeah. act. Yeah. 
that's the uh, that's the good news about uh, next month is that I'm gonna get to take my mind off of my album for like a half a minute, okay. which I actually think is good because mm-hmm. I've been like obsessed over it for like the last year and a half. But yeah, I'm gonna work with um, I'm work with the members of Queen. That's exciting. Yeah, next week I'm going to London to rehearse and out there for a minute to to work with them, and then um, I think I have a gig in like San Francisco, and then I fly back, and it's lots of back and forth in the plane. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's take you back to American Idol. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm sure everybody in this room was cheering for Adam to win, and this is not to diss anybody else, you know, on the past few shows, including. A, you know Philip Phillips, who just won. He's the latest uh, idol, but it's almost—is it almost a good thing? I wanted to hear your honest opinion on it. That you didn't win American Idol, or there's still a part of you probably say, "No, I wish I had won it." <laughs> but but it's almost a good thing because it seems like the people who have won it minus two or three, sorry, the people who haven't won it have gone almost. There's been a few people who have gone further, not winning the competition. In a way? I don't think there's any logic to it, actually. I think it's kind of case by case. Right. Because there's also people that have won that have done really well. Right, right. So right. it's... I don't, I don't think there's... There's no formula. No, there's no formula. I think it's case by case. I think you get on the show and it's this platform. Right. And it's a great way to show yourself to the public and show what you can do and to share your talent. And then it's what you do after that, how you run right. with it. You know, run with the opportunity that, that matters. You know, I think it's a combination of... Um, maybe talent uh, right. and and people being into what you do and also your work ethic. You know, it's a, <laughs> this is not an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> we make it's, the job is to make it look easy, but right. it's not easy. You know, it's right. a lot of work. So, yeah, it's kind of depends on, on on place and time. I think. Yeah. Kelly Clarkson recently just came out because um, she's hosting. Actually, she's judging that duets reality show. A, would you c- even consider being a judge on one of those reality? Type Maybe. Yeah. Shows? That'd be fun. Okay. Yeah. And she actually revealed saying that um, you know back then when she was an idol, she was dropped off at a mall. She had to get her own wardrobe, do her own makeup and hair. So she was kind of saying how things have changed with Idol. That there's a big production and everyone is taken care of. So can you maybe tell us an experience that happened to you while you were an idol that wasn't so glamorous um they, actually it's funny that she says that she got dropped off at a mall the styling thing was pretty funny because uh they gave us a budget every mm-hmm. week for our outfit which was literally like maybe two hundred dollars you know okay. <laughs> it wasn't like they weren't really letting you like look you know totally fierce you know so i took a lot of matters into my own hands kind of like i do now and I, I i worked with a great stylist on the show actually he was a really cool guy and we we would go shopping. I'd be like, okay, we're going here, and I'm actually going to go into my suitcase and find something, and then I'm going to ask my friend to lend me something. And, you know, I think I think this business is is very oftentimes a result of what you put into it. Right. Um, you know, if you just stand there and kind of let the powers that be do what they want to do and let the system work for you, you get so far, and you do get stuff done. And there's music presented and all this. But... I'm kind of person that I'm never satisfied and I like to take it to the next level and I like to create a bigger deal out of it. So I put my all into it yeah. all the time. Well, you've done a great sure. job doing absolutely. that. No, thanks. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Let's hear for Adam Lambert. He's here for a while longer. Let's let's take a few of your questions. These are our winners from Virgin Radio who uh, who had a chance to come in here today and take time off of school and work, I'm sure, to be here uh, to see you. Do we have any audience questions? Anybody want to step up and... Okay, come on up here. And I know I'm leaving the camera right now, but we're going to pass you the mic, and you can introduce yourself and ask your question. So, hi, I'm Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Um, I've been a fan since your Wicked days. Oh, wow. Say, uh, yeah, way back when. So my question has to do with that. Um, I know that the music career is going great for you now, but do you have any interest in going back and maybe doing some stage, show, stage shows on Broadway? Not right now. Hmm. I'm, like, so in love with my album and this whole process, <laughs> but I, I don't, I'm not ruling it out. I mean, it definitely could come up at some point, you know, if it was the right thing at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think, I think you know, you, you work on something for a long time. We all have, like, phases in our life, you know? And I worked doing theater for a really long time and got a lot out of it and made a lot of lasting friendships in that world. And I think I kind of like got a lot of it, like got a lot from it and kind of did it for a while. Uh-huh. So now I'm on to like this chapter, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But but don't mark my words. I'm, I'll probably be, you know, in some show <laughs> at some point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. All right. We have our nighttime host, Tony Stark, right who's on there. every single night. That Good is a question guy. for Adam Lambert. Adam, nice to meet you. Congratulations on all the success. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to ask you one question. Chris Allen was just in an airport, and he was asked about Idol, and he said it was time to put Idol away. 
time <laughs> has come and gone. There's also rumors he's about to get dropped from his label. So where do you see? Really, his yeah. album's amazing. Have you heard it? Oh, right. Do you still Gorgeous. talk to him? Uh, I talk to him occasionally, you know, like right. little like tweets and things. But his album's great. I really it, liked it. He says that uh, because Idol's ratings are down, it's time to put it away. Where do you stand on Idol, and do, what do you think will refresh the show if it needs to be refreshed? In your opinion? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I I think what he was probably saying was that you know, the only thing people ask him about is Idol. You know, and it's it's an interesting existence because when you're done with the show, it's you're done with the show. I mean, yes, of course, that's how you were introduced to the audience. And I'm sure he feels the same way. I, I love the show. I think it's great. It put me where I am today. But other than that, there's not a lot of association. You know what I mean? Like, what you do after Idol is your own thing, you know? Um, I think the show's great. I enjoyed it this year. I watched it. I, I liked the show. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, I was rooting for Jessica. <laughs> you were. So was I. I was, I was rooting, rooting for Jessica. For Philip Phillips. But I thought Philip was great. I think he, I think he's a really talented guy and like really captivating. And I thought it was great. I thought Joshua was great too. I mean, they were all awesome. Yeah. I think it's really important to to point out that the fact is what you do. It's not like you're riding on Idol's coattails. You're kind of saying, okay, this is what's helped me make my mark in the industry, and now I'm going to show everyone what I really got, right? Um, but what do you think it is about your music, your your look? that kind of resonates with a lot of the fans around the world. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm definitely going for it, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing about the show is that it's it's a launching pad. And it's the best launching, one of the best launching pads you can, you can ask for. I mean, because mm-hmm. it's such a broad viewership. But after the show, it's like, then what? Do you think you that know? there hasn't been someone like you in a while that you kind of have this niche in the industry that not a lot of people, I guess, have found? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. I mean, I don't know. I'm not that objective. Tough questions. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay, to do I want to know about what's, yeah. what about your look today? Who put this ensemble together? Because you seem like a real, you have a good keen eye for fashion. Uh, I did. Yeah? Yeah. Just a jacket and some jeans. I don't You're know. You're just a normal guy. Yeah, you know. I mean, who put your outfit together? <laughs> I did, <Wow>. actually. <laughs> he did. That's another story. I come to work with a luggage, and I'm like, what looks good What should I wear? <laughs> I mean, I think I think that's the thing is that I think when you look at an artist and you you kind of, it, it, obviously it's part of the territory we objectify right. artists you know mm-hmm. like when you have someone single on their CD and you see them on TV or the radio but like at the end of the day like I'm just doing a gig you know what I mean and I'm I'm very happy to do it but it's not there's not that much to read into it's like yeah I put these boots on you know I mean you know what I mean yeah it's like uh, it's fun too I mean I love it but it's you know when I go to work this is my job and dressed for work and I'm going to talk to people and talk about what I love, my music and my messages and right. yeah. Okay, then I got another question for you. Do you like the attention that you get from the media and the paparazzi? Sometimes you get good attention, sometimes you don't get such flattering attention. You know, it you would be it that? would be lovely to be able to control exactly when you got the attention, you know? That's the part that's hard is it's kind of out of your control. But, you know, it's without it, you know, without it you don't get publicity and that's how you remind people of what you do and that I have an album out. Guess what? There's a picture of me in your magazine because I have an album out, you know? It's part of the gig, you know? passing right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's all part of it, you know? So. so you're playing the game, you know? It is a game. Yeah. It is a game. I mean, Idol was a game. I mean, the whole thing. It's a, um, you know, picking the right song, you know, singing it the right way, um, you know, looking a certain way. It's all, it's all a strategy. But I think it's kind of a microcosm for life. I mean, that is life, you know. And are you at the happiest point in your life right now, do you think? So far, yeah, I feel good. I feel really good. I feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of balance in my life that I hadn't had before. I have this great album that I just released that that people are loving, and it's doing well. And I have, you know, so that's professional success. And then I have, like, my personal life is really lovely and, and fulfilling right now. And my friends are, like, having babies and... Yeah, it's a good place. It's a good time. Uh, Meatloaf compared your voice to uh, as strong, the strength of your voice, as strong as Whitney Houston and Aretha Franklin. That's a pretty big compliment. Oh, Meatloaf. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, but it, I, that's a wonderful compliment. I wouldn't know if right. I would agree with him, but I mean, that's very sweet. To when say. did you, because you do have a unique and you have a very strong vocal presence on the mic, when did you realize, how old were you, when either somebody told you or you knew it, it just kind of clicked and you're like, wow. I, um, I, I, was, doing really a, I was doing a, th- a musical and I had like a solo and I remember like, I auditioned for it in front of the it, the way that it was structured. It was like you would audition in front of everybody, and 
I remember people were like, whoa. And I thought, oh, okay. I got something. I got, I got something. <laughs> Someone said, whoa. <laughs> there were people gasping. That's good. <laughs> and they continue to do so. Yeah, yeah. So today, and that feeling, that feeling of affecting people with my voice, that was a really good feeling. That was an intoxicating feeling. Like, I loved being able to do that to people. So... Do we have more questions from our winners here? We have a few more minutes with Adam Lambert. We're live at virginradio.ca. We are speaking to the one and only Adam Lambert. We're going to take some tweets as well because we were asking people to tweet us some questions. Anybody here have more questions? Don't be afraid. Adam's a really shy. nice guy. You Doesn't can ask mind. him anything. He's so down to earth, right? Anything. Yeah. I've got one here. <laughs> sure. Go <laughs> for it. Before we get to that one, I uh, have one from Manon Damour. She asked the question, ask him if, I have no idea what this means, by the way, Adam. Ask him if he had his maple candy. Yeah. Yes, I did get that gift. The gift that she gave me yesterday. Is that oh, her? she gave you that gift? Is that her? Uh, maybe her. Yeah, at the at the thing yesterday. Yesterday at Music Plus. Yeah. Aww. Yes, she did say that. Yeah, it was right good. Now. So sweet. Oh, there you go. Okay, so what's bit. the craziest thing a fan has done for you on tour? Or done to you on tour? Um, The craziest? I don't know. You know, I always get asked that question and I never know the answer to it. <laughs> so they're pretty tame. No. 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 Are you kidding me? No. Did you not see them yesterday? No, on? it's it's a it's a wild, you know, there's a fervor there. It's good. I mean, that's what you want really. I mean, if 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 what I create and my brand and everything gets people that excited, then great. You know, I think people want an outlet for their energy and they want to get excited about something and they want to have a hobby and that's what being a fan kind of is. It's like a hobby. It's like this thing you you inject yourself into. So that's right. great. So who are you musically influenced by today? Like who are you listening to? Well, I listen to like a lot of what's out there, like mm -hmm. Top 40. Um, and uh, I, I've been listening to a lot of like kind of new pop electro funk stuff. Right. Um, the Scissor Sisters album just came out. It's really good. My friend Sam Sparrow, who I wrote with on this album, his new album is amazing. Um, well, uh, Jamiroquai has a new like an album that came out this last year that's unbelievable. I've been listening to that. I like that like funky pop stuff. Yeah. Well, you hear it. You definitely hear it on Trespassing. It's cool. a different sound, and I love it. Yeah. You're in the mood to dance. Shake that ass. I will. Yeah. We have another Not question. Camera, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do it. I'm sure. Uh, there's another question via the uh, Tweet Universe. Ask him how it was to be the executive producer for his album. He was in charge of it. Was he in charge of everything from A to Z? It's not, it's not the entire A to Z. I mean, I worked with an amazing team of people. I mean, I'm not going to take credit for the whole album right. in that regard. But basically what it means is that I was in the creative driver's seat. I was at the head of the table. You know, uh, I had a vision that I really wanted to keep for the album, and that was my gig. You know, And in addition to that, I got to co-write most of it. So it, it, it was good you know, because you know, I had a lot of people saying, well, what about this? And I would say, hmm, yes, mm, mm, not really. You know what I mean? It let me be kind of in, in control of it, right. which was great. But I, I, I can't claim that there was like a lot of amazing people working on the album. It's, you know, I just kind of kept it all glued together creatively. So basically, I guess the message of your album, if you wrote about it, what, what were you going through that time to make such a great dance hit album? What were you going well, through at the time? To when make I you first write started that? writing, like with stuff playing now, like this dark, the darker half of the album, the second half of the album, uh, a lot of that was kind of created first. Um, I had gotten off tour. I was kind of, you know, it had been a long year. Um, I'd had a, a handful of, of crappy relationship things go down. <laughs> um, this is before I was with my current boyfriend, but I was kind of like bummed and tired and just worn out and and reflecting on the past couple of years, the, the darker side of it, you know, some of my personal stuff that I'd gone through, not the professional. And so that's what, that's where I was writing from is, 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 um, being treated like shit. <laughs> We've all Who been hasn't? there. We've all been there, Adam. So every so, morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know what it is, I think everybody, no matter who you are, right. no matter if you're a boy or a girl, you're gay or straight, black or white, young or old, we all want connection. We all want love. We all want companionship. We all want to feel needed. Um, and so there was a point in my life at that point where I felt like, man, I just can't get it right. And so I was writing about some of the darker stuff, um, some of the insecurities and, and heartaches. And then I kind of got into a, a relationship, which was so great, mm -hmm. and started hanging out with him. Also, like, you know, now that I was back home, I started hanging out with my friends again and, like, getting to go out and do, like, fun, normal things. And I, at that point, I was like, I'm not depressed anymore. <laughs> I, I'm having a good time. And I want to write music about this, about the joy of, like, 
being fabulous and 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 having great friends and having a lot of fun and being crazy and being in love and all that so i think what's great about the album as a whole is after i wrote all this music when it came time to put together the track listing i wanted to tell a story of of what it takes to be your own person and what it takes to be an individual and to be fabulous and to be fierce and to feel sexy and free and and strong but then also lift the veil a little bit and show what lies underneath that sometimes because it's not always easy yeah oh, well you make it look easy that's the that's what the dance songs are for you know <laughs> thank well, you we want to thank you for joining us here because we're getting the wrap-up signal uh, signal and we want everybody here in the room to have a chance to uh to meet you quickly and yeah. get some autographs and pictures yeah. so we want to thank everybody for watching on virginradio.ca Yay. from around the world thank you adam lambert great guy thank you so Thanks, much guys, a pleasure yeah, meeting appreciate you appreciate it Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. There we go. Thank you.